Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my top 20 K-pop B-sides of 2021. This is going to be a much quicker video than my top 30 songs title tracks of 2021 just because it does take a long time to make so we'll kind of just run through this list. I'll give my quick thoughts. Although the song clips might be a little bit longer even than the title track ones because I think largely you're more likely to not have heard these because they are the b-sides uh, so I kind of wanted to capture what I love about the song in uh, my little portions that I cut out of each one uh, so we'll run down a couple things real quick just like the singles top 30 that I did this is one song per artist uh, this especially is important for the b-sides I think because there are some artists that would dominate and be very largely on this list and I kind of want to spread things out so each artist gets one b-side to appear on this list uh, number two I'm probably missing a ton of things because one of the things I said I was going to do or wanted to do more is get to more b-sides and more album reactions in 2021 that didn't exactly happen as much as I wanted it to so there are many albums that I would really really like to get to still from 2021 that I haven't so this is just what I have heard basically so it can be limited in scope also b-sides what are b-sides whatever is on this list I'm considering a b-side we're not gonna be having any arguments what b-sides are in k-pop I think are kind of strange to begin with because I grew up knowing b-sides as like first of all it's what's on the opposite side of a record I think that's how it started um, whereas what I grew up knowing is that b-sides are what didn't make the full album things that either didn't fit into the concept songs that weren't good enough you may get two or three b-sides for a whole uh, you know album of 14 songs and that's released later and lastly before we start I just want to recommend and put it out there that I have a patreon where you get lots of live stages album reactions where I've come across pretty much all of these or most of these b-sides um, and also variety shows so if you want to support me get a lot of extra bonus content that is the way to do it uh, also subscribe here if you're new let's jump into the list starting with number 20 <laughs> N Hypen's Fever. I feel like this is most people's like favorite N Hypen song probably. It isn't for me, but I still really love it and where it sits in their discography from what I've heard so far. Uh, a lot of songs like, you know, Drunk Days can blast you over the head or even their newest with Blessed Cursed. Uh, but this one is very much an atmospheric vibe, really plotting, slow building. It reels you in. Um, and I appreciate it for that and I love a song that when it has such a great hook as this does when it's seamlessly built through the song that you know from the verse to the pre-chorus of the chorus you kind of don't see those cut points as you do with a lot of k-pop uh, it just fortifies that um, um, really dreamlike atmosphere that this song has um, it's it's total vibe song really enjoy it and hyphens fever Idols Han Alone in Winter. I think that this might be one of my favorite, if not my favorite, intro songs to an album. And this song, or this album, as I said, probably when I uh, did my top 30 and put Hua in there, this album, I Burn, really does just completely um, give you fall, winter feelings. And I love how it sets the tone right off the bat for the album. Uh, intros that lead into the title track and then kind of don't feel connected to the rest of the album are fine because they support that title track but this song really just 
lets you know and is foreshadowing to what you're about to experience for the rest of uh, your listen of this album. Uh, from the orchestral pieces to the, the piano, the piano is so amazing. The chanting and how clear their vocals are and they all come in layered after one of it, uh, another. I love this song and uh, it's something that I cannot skip when there's a lot of albums where the intros I enjoy but I still don't put them on my playlist this one is like my favorite off of the whole album basically just because it's a tone setter Wendy's When This Rain Stops. I wanted to put Like Water on my top 30 playlist because it was one of my favorite songs of the year, but it just didn't make it. And largely that was because I've come to really love this song so much more. It is a bit more her and I guess less because it is less of a structure of a title track. Um, I, I'm just drawn to it a bit more. It feels so much more personal. Uh, after everything that she had been through, this really was a message to fans about kind of what she was experiencing through those times. And I feel like it's just kind of her through that period in a song. And you get all of that emotion, all of that power uh, in her performance. Uh, so I'm just really left drawn to this song a lot more. Uh, and it's definitely, definitely one of my favorites that I've heard in This one might be a surprise for a lot of people. Stray Kids Star Lost, uh, I really, really love. There are a lot of songs I could have chosen off of the No Easy album, and it was a very tough decision. You know, Secret Secret was up there as well, uh, but I had to just go with this one for how it made me feel the first time I listened to it, uh, and just that catchy build that it has. Sungman's voice is unbelievable, and I have a feeling this is actually going to be towards the bottom of people's list when it comes to their favorite b-sides off of this album specifically but i don't know there's just something about it that i'm so it really gets to me uh, when a song has just a fantastic build like this and there's such payoff uh, and i think this song has it i i i really am conflicted because i can shift a bit depending on the day um from you know the view to uh to domino i switch constantly with this album but i had to stick with star lost purely for how uh it made me feel the first time i heard it TXT's Frost threw me for a loop, man. Uh, right off the bat, I'm expecting again, as I've said, oh, they just own this pop rock concept that they've been running with. So I'm looking for that as the first time I listen to it. And it starts off more in a hip hop range, but gets pretty hard. It has like a, a 90s kind of um, backtrack to it um, in the beat. I, I love this song and it has that kind of 
faux aggression to it that I can get so hype listening to this song and it can fuel a workout for me. But at the same time, it doesn't overstep its boundaries in that ways uh, in that way, and it's still slick and polished. Uh, I I just am so excited for the future of TXT if any of their releases in 2021 or any indication of what they're going to stick with uh they're really one to watch for me because they pretty much release gold throughout the entire year Twice as Cactus, a lot of people thought that this would be my favorite off of their Formula of Love album, and it was. It has the rock vibes that I'm looking for. Uh, this song, I think, bred from the the, the mind of Gio when it came to, I believe, watering her cactus, and it's kind of that idea, and the, the chanting of Save Me. People have said that this sounds kind of like a church song, and I guess, I guess I could somehow see that, but as someone that went to church for many, many years in the past, uh, I don't necessarily connect it that way uh, but it does have the rise and the payoff that i'm looking for it has the emotion behind it it really was a battle between like this and last waltz espresso maybe rewind in there it's such a great album but cactus has to be the one that i've played the most off of it and definitely the one that floored me uh the most the first time i listened to it <laughs> Wean's Trash, this is quintessential Wean. Her vocals in this are exactly what I love about her. The airiness, but that kind of brings you in in a comforting yet dangerously sexy way. I feel that mostly when I listen to Wean and she drives it home in the performance video of this. If you have not seen my reaction, I think I did this one on Patreon. Man, uh, I love, love, love this song. It's probably my favorite solo track from her, even with the new album, although I really enjoyed that album a lot too. Uh, it this seems more of a title tracky worthy song rather than a lot of the b-sides we have heard from her that are a bit more simplistic and more of the kind of indie route that I've seen her sound kind of take when it comes to the b-sides um, this one is yeah more for the masses which usually isn't necessarily what I gravitate towards but I do here because I not only get quintessential ween here but it also kind of feels like something i would hear from mamamoo in general uh and i kind of just like that the little connection there um between her solo work and the group work so i love it ween's trash Victims flip a coin has the gym song hype quality, but in the slick, uh, suave package that I was kind of referring to before. Love this song. The the vocal run high note towards the end is insane. Uh, the choreo for this track is also awesome. Uh, Dohanse's parts, the way that he leads into it is so, so smooth. I feel like a lot of the songs that I listen to, to where Dohanse really takes you aback, it has been mostly of his fast rapping ability, whereas here you get a little bit of that, but it's more so his, his flow and his delivery um, that really gets you and just captivates you. He especially does also in the performance video. Um, this is an album with what I said being my, I think, number two favorite song of 2021. I have to have to get to the rest of this album eventually. It's like a must listen to, but Flip a Coin as for now is one of my favorites off of it. 
눈앞에 두고 전화를 했네 이게 저는 거 남친은 더 모두 be burned 미모는 덤 모두가 알고 있지 뒤박힌 세대 위 제트를 이끄는 아이돌 래퍼는 킹인지 킹인지 그게 누구인지 That's the bridge she's so windy Oh my god 그냥 다 랩하게 써버릴라 오늘 we are potion 해물 간 거물부터 다섯 머리 나가 fuck it up 여기 ring ding ring 쳐진 배던 비 비워 영주 백원 입장 금지 Z2 세대 너는 아마 우리가 점점 미워지지만 돈을 발랐어라도 여기 깨고 싶지 Right? Is This Bad Bitches number by Soyeon featuring Lee Young-ji and BB. Man, uh, I wouldn't expect this to be on this list. I'm someone who doesn't really come from a background of a lot of purely uh, hip hop or rap music, but this one captivates me. Uh, there are a lot of artists or even roles, positions in K-pop where people will be the rapper, but can't necessarily rap truly, or they're not actually a rapper. They start when they get into the group and they're given the position of rapper. But there are some people that really have a, not only a knack for it, but a passion for it. And these are the artists here um, that really can pull it off. So I love seeing them get that kind of spotlight and the ability, um, the means to do it, the opportunity. And Soyeon, in her part, it's like everything is clearly leading up to her just absolutely killing it on this, her getting a little bit aggressive. You hear the raw influence in uh, her voice, there's a little bit of vocal fry there. Uh, I really, really like this track. It has an amazing instrumental with the dial tones and everything, and you get so much personality between all three of them. Fantastic song. Dreamcatcher's New Days. I think this is another surprising one. I feel like a lot of you are expecting Whistle or Poison Love, which is certainly up there, probably number two for me with Dreamcatcher. Um, or even, uh, what, what am I forgetting that I'm, I'm thinking of that everyone also loves? Wind Blows. Probably thinking of Wind Blows as well, but no, it's New Days. And what does it for me is that this is kind of Dreamcatcher personified. There's something about the build of this song that just reminds me of classic old school Dreamcatcher from like their first two albums and I'm just kind of in love with that. It, it gives me all of the feelings of where they have been, where they've come from, and where they've reached now. And them being such an underrated group for so long, and now I see them talked about everywhere, and they're so beloved by a lot of people, they're finally getting the recognition they deserve. So seeing just that older influence here in this song, uh, I don't know, it's, it's slightly emotional, and it's just something that I go back to a little bit more often, even though I find uh, something like Poison Love to possibly stand out a little bit more. This one has kind of a sentimental value to me. Red Velvet's pose has all the kind of quirkiness, fun, weird qualities that a lot of Red Velvet's red sounding songs do as opposed to their Velvet songs. Yet at the same time, it kind of ascends to this really pretty harmonious uh, chorus where everyone's vocals are layered. It's quintessential SM Red Velvet uh, greatness, but it just has a bit of the, the weirdness that you get out of a lot of second gen groups that seeped into a good bit of Red Velvet's discography on their red side. Uh, so it kind of has the total package. Pu pushing and Pulling, I think maybe in the long run could possibly be the better song, but it's just the addicting nature of a lot of uh, poses uh, quirks that they throw at you, like the sing-songy rapping nature that uh, Yeri and Irene have that really brings me back time and time again to the song. <laughs> Kiss me, sensei, 
Speak by Everglow. Wow, what a surprise this song was. This album, uh, what, what, Return of the Girl was the name of it. I did a reaction of this. Wow, the duality on this uh, album and also the duality of Everglow in general. They're known for their hard hitting, aggressive songs. Uh, First was my favorite song of the year when it comes to singles, at least. And Don't Speak is really a standout on this album. It was like a split, split uh, race uh, between this and Company. Company is everything Everglow distilled into perfection. But something about Don't Speak stands out so much because it's not what you're expecting from Everglow. And apart from the what I just played right now, listen to the whole song because just the entry into the chorus is so unexpected. It goes from the bright, cute, like disco-ified song to something that's a bit more reeled in in certain aspects with like Mia's sultry, soulful, like, 70s aesthetic voice uh, in this song. It's a really just a standout song to me, uh, and one that is like a Raise the Spirits type track. Also, the performance video, the choreo is so, so cute. Uh, Yudin absolutely kills it during her parts. I really love this one, and it kind of is just cement cementing... Uh, what is my cat doing? He's so dumb. He chases his own tail. He's so dumb. He's dumb. Okay, anyway, it's really cementing Everglow as, like, one of my favorite girl groups, possibly? Uh, they're just releasing absolute gold, um, so I'm so excited for their future. My girls in Luna with their song, Wow, my favorite group in K-pop, bringing one of the best B-sides of the year. Wow should have been the title track, but it is just not a title track song. That's just kind of how it works. You need something that's very marketable and mass appeal, and Wow might be somewhat in that lane, but PTT really does fit the title track vibe more, even though it might not be, you know, one of my favorite title tracks of the year by any stretch. Uh, but wow, on the other hand, man, it's so densely layered. The ad libs, some of the best ad libs uh, and backing vocals on this track throughout the entire year. Really high energy, amazing choreography. This song is just a ton of fun, very colorful and bright has some shades of older Luna to me, also has a bit of a disco aesthetic to it. People have long said that Luna is straying from a bit of that sound that I that solidified their identity early on in their years, the Jaden Jong years, and I would somewhat agree to that. I do think that they have shifted in certain ways, but they are a group that knows no genre, so you're kind of going to get that with the territory. But every now and then, you get that lit of, little taste of a song that reminds you of that quintessential old school Luna, and WoW is one of those for me. It just sounds, the shifting synths and everything sounds like early Luna, and I, I really love it for that. There are other songs that I like on this album, uh, for sure. Dance On My Own is another solid English track after Voice Slash Star uh, came out to the previous year, but this one is definitely the biggest standout on the album, for sure. You lied to me is a non summer
Ooh, Hoa says, bless you. I'm listening to pretty much all of these songs in snippets right before I record the little talks about them. And this one has me feeling a bit emotional. It has that effect on you. It has such the most beautiful, blooming rise. Uh, a song very personal, as is this album very personal to Hwasa. Uh, but this song seeming to be about finding a lot of comfort in yourself. And she had said that during the recording of Guilty Pleasure that she very much was able to balance her life and balance herself and what she felt about herself during quarantine and everything. Uh, and this is finding that comfort, uh, learning to love yourself rather than finding validation in other things or validation in other people, their acceptance of you, uh, and uh, being able to let go of those people and take them as a blessing and bless them yourselves uh, for the experiences or the lessons that you've learned uh, from being with them. Uh, it's such a great song. This song also has the slight guitar uh, rock influence there at the end as the electric guitar comes in. It's so beautifully layered and songs that are somewhat linear in this way uh, and don't feel uh, like they revert back onto the chorus and and have that very segmented structure. I feel like this kind of has that with the rise. Um, so it, it's something that I can listen to over and over again and never get tired of it. Wasa carries her emotion here so damn well. I put it in the vein of LMM off of her Maria album, which is by far my favorite song. Uh, on that album and probably my favorite solo song from Hwasa, but this one right neck and neck with it. I think these two uh, tracks, LMM and Bless You, are golden. No matter what you say, you Chunga's Flying on Faith. I would have missed this one. Uh, Carencia, her album released in 2021 is one of my like big backlog ones I have to get to. I own it and have yet to listen to it. But she performed this at the World Is One uh, concert that I reacted to the whole concert. Uh, and this is where I heard that for the first time and was blown away. Holy shit, what a fantastic, fantastic song. Has again, just like the Hwasa song we listened to, I actually see a lot of similarities there. Amazing, amazing rise. You have the strumming of the guitar that kind of ascends to this piano in the pre-chorus, and then the harsh, uh, like, electrified percussion. So, so amazing. Really like this one. Kind of talking about someone being in a cyclical rut that they can't escape from, and I find that incredibly, incredibly relatable. I think a lot of you guys would as well. Um, so yeah, th this is definitely, definitely one of my favorite B-sides of the year, and I have to get to the rest of the album. <laughs> Pixies Bewitched. I had said in my top 30 singles of 2021 video that Addicted was the song that really, really changed the narrative with Pixie for me that had me completely take notice. And Bewitched was then the song on top of that that I reacted to a couple days later that was like, okay, this might be now one of my favorite girl groups out there because it's just such an amazing, amazing song that has so many different emotions wrapped up in it. It has the kind of sinister, dark edge that a lot of Pixie songs do do, but it also has a lot of prettiness to it and also like a sexual intensity and I think that mostly comes from the performance and and the vocals of the the John off uh, that, that you get at, at one point and Dia do we need to talk about Dia's performance in this because good god is she just an absolute star and amazing amazing center 
in this song. It kind of has everything. It has the synth that I'm looking for, but it's more of like a modernized version of uh, a lot of those like 80s synth tracks that people have been doing recently. This is all Pixie all day. They're not aping a style or a sound. It's all them. And the, uh, the bridge slash like final verse that they do is so excellent. So, so excellent. The song really, really blooms towards the end. Uh, this, I think, is a lot better than Addicted, and that was one of my favorite songs of the year. So that just goes to show how much I really love this song. Purple Kisses, So Why, penned by my completely not biased Chan. God, she's a genius. Not only is she an excellent vocalist, can dance her ass off, can kind of rap as well. She can also produce amazing songs. So she worked on this one and uh, it really, really shows. So Purple Kiss is the main group that I really want to point out here when it comes to the limit that I gave for one B-side per group because they might have seven songs on this list. They released two amazing albums this year. They debuted this year and they're just absolute complete excellence. So Why um, off of the Hide and Seek album is the one that I had to go with because it's just the one that stuck with me the most um, as the, the year went on as I listened to it. The anti uh, kind of drop chorus that it has really throws you for a loop uh, the first time you listen to it, but it becomes so addicting. Uh, it's such a fun, flirtatious song. It's just kind of perfection and it, it just goes to show how great Purple Kiss is, how talented this group is in so many different ways that even just in their uh, first comeback ever, they've got you know our, their own members writing their own stuff and it comes out like to be some of their best stuff. So bright, bright future for Purple Kiss. This song is amazing. I got this on my way One Wee's Aurora, what more do I have to say about this song? I feel like a lot of you guys were expecting this to be on here, and for damn good reason. It is a showstopper. It floored me the first time that I heard it. And I think the first time I heard it was a live performance uh, from uh, that I did on Patreon, and then this, this performance video came out, and it so does the song justice. It has the arena rock grand feeling to it. It's so big and, and just important. Important. It floors you with emotion just sonically. The, just the way it sounds has the ability to do that. Young Hoon's vocals, I've said time and time again, are maybe my favorite in K-pop. They're definitely top five. Kang Yoon's guitar solo carrying into this final drop here at the end of the song. The final chorus is so amazing too. Everything about it is is kind of perfection. Uh, it's one of my favorite uh, One Wee songs that's been released. The, the Universe came out this year. I think they really missed out because that would have definitely been way, way high on my list. Uh, but One Wee just keeps killing it. I think they might be my favorite K-band in, uh, in the K-pop industry. Uh, and they just uh, keep nailing it, release after release.
ATs is take me home. Oh my god, I'm seeing them tomorrow. They're playing this live. So goddamn psyched. This is probably, I, yeah, it's the best B-side that I've heard from ATs at least. It's so incredible. It reminds me so much uh, of a group that I absolutely love called Gunship. If you enjoy this song, please, I implore you to check out Gunship. They do the new noir synth wave thing so, so well. There's actually even a little portion in this song that sounds tremendously like their track Tech Noir. I'll probably match them up together to see if you can recognize it. So yeah, small similarity, but it's just the connection that I make, and it's uh, that type of song that I really love. I'm into the synthwave stuff, the the modern retro takes, and this song has that. It has the amazing vocals, it has the tremendous build, that little drum fill before the last drop is unbelievable, and then the saxophone comes in. Everything about this is just gold, and it, it is a real standout in their discography. Nothing else sounds like this that ATs has done, and they absolutely nail it. I love every bit of this. If you want to, please, on Patreon, check out my reaction to this album. Even though I'm very, like, wishy-washy on a lot of the B-sides when it comes to the Fever series, this one is probably one of the most hype reactions I ever did. Like, I was floored when I listened to this for the first time. It's excellent. And before I release my absolute favorite B-side of the year, let's do some honorable mentions. I'll kind of list off really quickly a, a handful of songs that I really did love. There's so many that uh, that won't make this list, that won't even make the honorable mention, so I'll just go rapid fire. And And now for my absolute favorite B-side of 2021. If you've been listening during this video and kind of picking out what I really do like in my songs, this might not be a surprise to you. It has the rising qualities to where it flourishes and uh, is emotionally impactful, does some dynamic switch ups. It's everything that I really love in a song, something that I can dive deeper into when it comes to the lyrical content. It blew me away the first time I heard it, but I should not be too surprised in knowing who it's coming from. I use my C. What a brilliant song. Uh, I've been thinking about actually because I reacted to this in a compilation of a bunch of different songs, pulling this reaction out because I think it's just such a tremendous song that more people need to hear. Not only that, but I think it really did affect me when I first heard it. And it's one of those takes that where like I recorded this and I'm like, wow, that just felt very 
cohesive. Like it, I connected with the song right off the bat. Sometimes it takes a couple listens when it comes to K-pop and listening to stuff in, in the, you know, not your native language. But for me, I just, I felt everything that IU put into this song within the first listen. She is such an emotive vocalist, one of the best vocalists like of all of K-pop, hands down. I think everyone can kind of agree with that. I love how personally she writes her songs, how it's very much like an open book uh, on display of her emotion of herself. She even, I think the song is like five minutes and 16 seconds long, which is to rem uh, be uh, uh, her birthday, May uh, 16th. So stuff like that, little tidbits are cool of how personal this song is to her. It has just incredible lyrics. I don't close my eyes to the darkness that locks me up anymore. I won't pretend I don't know myself again. And then the, the stinger, one of the most stinger lines I've ever read, to somewhat of the translated effect of did that child hurt for so long just to become me it is one of the bleakest most depressing things i've ever heard and if you know me if you know my taste i love that stuff i really love falling into that depressing emotion and i think doing that kind of helps you come out and see the light and the way the chorus comes in the vocal choir it's beautiful. It's like opening up opening up the gates of heaven. Uh, everything about this song is real perfection. And uh, I hope if you are hearing it for the first time here that you go out and listen to the full song because it's absolutely amazing. It's a long one. Like I said, it's five minutes and 16 seconds long, but it is worth every goddamn second and then some. So that was my top 20 B-sides in K-pop of 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. I made this one a bit shorter uh, just because I have a lot of other stuff to get to, but I hope you still had a good time uh watching this and listening to these songs with me i hope some of these stood out to you let me know down below what your favorite b-sides of 2021 were as i said i have missed so many things lots of nct's albums um i have to get to chungas as i said uh, sun Mies i still haven't done i hear such great things about uh espa's album the b-sides on that the savage album so there are so many things that i have missed let me know what your highlights were down below uh and also let me know if what of these stood out to you if you're hearing them for the first time i always love knowing and kind of what motivates me in making these videos is knowing that i'm uh getting people into music they haven't heard before or opening up an avenue uh, to something that they might have been closed off before but now it's something that they're interested in that that really does drive uh, me in making these so thank you guys so much if you want more content as i said if you want to support me please consider checking out my patreon uh, i got a bunch of different tiers on there so if you're just interested in live stages there's a tier for you if you want live stages album reactions and variety stuff the long form stuff there's a tier for you um there's a lot of content on there from a multitude of groups i am not one that kind of sticks to just two or three groups or whatever i like to explore everything and be very well rounded in a lot of the k-pop that i listen to so we uh don't really stick on stuff for too long there's so much stuff uh out there to explore and i don't want to really hinder myself like that so there's going to be something on there that you're going to like and if you can't support me that way or you know things are tight i understand just consider subscribing if you're new or liking this video if you enjoyed it because that helps me very much in that youtube algorithm really appreciate it I had a great year with you guys this is going to be my last well one of two videos that i've done uh so only two videos for the roundup of 2021 i expected to do more but uh as it is when it comes around December or January things get tumultuous uh, with timing so I'm gonna have to cut it here but I still absolutely love celebrating this stuff with you these are some of my favorite videos that I do so thank you guys so much very very much appreciate it and I will see you next time